Welcome back everyone. We are going to finish out this receipt project. So last time we ended with creating the constructor, so now we're going to actually add some methods that will allow us to be a little bit more versatile in what we can calculate and how all of that uh, gets to be printed out to the screen. So we're going to start out with actually creating a toString method. Again, this is another thing that objects inherently already have. However, if you write it, write one in there yourself, then it will overwrite whatever was the default so you can actually have something specific. So inherently they have to return an actual string. So we're going to automatically have one of those uh, get returned. And right now it's just going to be the global variable cache cashier name. We're going to create a string buffer, which is really cool because instead of just creating a string to add to, this is a little bit more of an efficient way to uh, keep concatenating or adding to a string that you initially set. So now that we have that taken care of, we're going to call the variable and we're going to use the append uh, method in that object. It doesn't really matter which one of those you select. It does say which parameter it's expecting, but it'll figure itself out. So we're going to start with the store name. Basically, we are going to replace all of the system out print lines with an append for the string buffer. And again, since print line automatically puts a new line at the end of the string, we're going to have to explicitly say to put a new line at the end of it when we append it to the string buffer. So now we have the store name and the cashier name and the greeting taken care of. We're going to skip over the grocery items real quick and we're going to add in the tax rate and the payment type. And now we're just going to return that string buffer. Now it's giving us a little bit of an error. It's because I told it that a string is what it should be expecting to be returned, and so we just need to give uh, the toString method for the string buffer. So now what's really cool is we can call r1, which is our receipt uh, instance, and just give it the toString method, and now it will return us the toString. Now obviously you don't see anything happen because we didn't tell it to do anything with that result. So now we're going to actually print out what that string is that it's going to get back to us. And now we can see that we only have the store, the cashier name, the greeting, the tax rate, and the payment type, which is exactly what we put into the string buffer. So now we're going to comment that out, and we're actually going to include that in our constructor. now automatically whenever we create an instance it will take in the information and print it right out for us. Except we have to tell it to print it out. Again we didn't really do anything with the two string method. And there we go. Now it's printing out from the constructor. So now we're going to tackle this more complicated part, which is going to be the actual groceries. So we're going to start out with printing it out, or uh, better yet, we're uh, adding it to the string buffer, which will then obviously get printed out. And so in order to print out each item of the list, then we are going to use a for loop. Uh, and so the way that works is you start off with a 
variable of i. We're going to start at 0 since the index of a list starts at 0. And as long as i is less than the size of the list, uh, then it's going, it needs to keep going through it. And then we're going to increment i 1 every time it goes through. And as we do that, then it's going to look at the, uh, we're going to append to the rest of receipt output. And we're going to give it the uh, grocery list index. So we're going to get that index and add it to it. So since we have an empty array list, we actually need to populate that array list uh, by giving it some of those values that we have like on line 34 through 36. And the way we do that is we just uh, use the grocery list variable and add to it. Realized that I uh, spelled this wrong, so we're going to fix that real quick. So for now, we're just going to copy and paste uh, directly the uh, stuff we already had. And we'll just get rid of that now that we have taken care of it down below. Now we see these yellow lines because it's giving us a warning. We haven't actually given the array list a type. And so we're just going to give it type string. This just helps it optimize the memory for where it's going to save this while the program is running. And just update that in the parameters of our instance. So since everything came in a line, we actually want it one after each other, we're going to add the new line as well. So now we're really close. We just need to get the calculations of how much everything costs for the subtotal and then the actual total as well. So we're going to create a method called calculate subtotal. It's going to pop us out a double. So that's why we're going to put that uh, there in the signature line. And we're going to pass it in a list. Uh, and we're going to, we just named it grocery list. Now remember, there is scope in all of this. So when you see that it's brown, that means that it's going to be only, only the scope of that method. When it's blue, that's a global variable. And that'll be available to any of the methods in the class. So this method will only have access to whatever we pass into it. So again, we're going to cycle through the list so we can give, get a calculation of it. So we're going to create another for loop. Notice I did use i again for the iterator. And we can do this because, again, that scope is only in the method that it has uh, been used in. So since it wants a double, we need to return a double. We put in initially 0.0. .0. Well, now we're actually going to give it what we what we called a result. And the reason we set it to zero is because we're going to keep adding to it as we go through the list. So initially it would be zero. And as we iterate through, we're going to keep adding whatever the new variable is to what has already been calculated. Now again, it wanted to have that type casted, and so we need to actually give it not the primitive type double, but the object type double. That's why there's the capital D. And so since we have a string, we're going to need to change this. 
So I created a double array of type string that will actually allow us to input the different uh, groceries. So the first one will be the name of it, and the second one will actually be the cost of it. So we need to do a little bit of updating. Uh, it's actually not just a list anymore. Now it is a double array. So we're going to update that in our global variable and our constructor parameter. And now in the parameter of the calculate subtotal. Now that we're not using array list, we actually need to change the size method to not just be length. And so now every time it iterates through the first array, then the second one in each one of the indices will actually be the item itself. So we have an array of arrays. And so what we did there is now as it goes through, uh, I will be which index we're on of each item. And we already know that the second index, which is actually one, since we start indices with zero, so the second one will always be the number. So now we just need to cast this to a double, since it's coming in as a string. And if you just use the object double dot parse double, you'll take a string and turn it into a double for us, which will allow us to add it to our already started result of type double. Then we'll just do a quick update to our two string. So now we need to take out uh, the zero index, which will be our grocery name. And then we're going to actually give it a tab in the middle of that. And then we'll actually add the price as well. So now when we run it, we actually see what we want to see. We'll add our dollar sign to it. And we are one step closer to where we need to be. And we haven't actually used the, the value that comes from that method. So we will call it in our two string and append that after we have cycled through the list as well. So we'll label it so we know what that value is on the receipt. Give it some tabs. And we'll make sure we add that new line. And we can take away a tab and actually change that to a dollar sign. And there we go, we have it all taken care of. Now as you can see, because it is a double uh, with no, because we calculated it, it we didn't have it uh, show us two zeros after the decimal, which is obviously a standard format for currency. So I'm going to challenge you guys to figure out how to do that. And then let me know in the comments how you did it. So now in order to uh, calculate the tax, we're going to multiply the tax rate by the price um, or the subtotal. So that now gets us our six cents. Now typically you don't want to have to do the same calculation more than once. For this it's not going to be a lot unless you added a, a lot of items to the list. Whenever you have to iterate through a list 
it is a what we call an expensive operation. It's not very efficient to do it. The, oh, go over the same list twice. I'm already doing it twice by calculating it and then also iterating it through in the two string. So we're going to just have it run the calculate subtotal once, save that, and then we'll be able to uh, use it in both spots. Now we will take care of the total. And so we will take our subtotal and we will add that to our subtotal multiplied by our tax rate. And again, this could be done a couple ways. You could have it already calculated and left in the variable, or you could take the subtotal multiplied by the tax rate plus one, or one plus the tax rate. Multiple ways to do this to get the same result. What I was taught was to get things to work first, then go back and refactor or recode it to make it more efficient. So now we can see our whole list, grocery list, subtotal, tax, total, and then the payment type. So since that was being printed out, we will finish it up by actually using the two string for that. Now that everything works as we expect it to, we're going to add a few more groceries to our list and see if it updates the way it should. Now we can run it and we get a subtotal of $20, tax of 20 cents with a total of $20.20. .20. And now we can show that they can also do the change as well. So now it's your turn to see how we can format it to only have two decimal places like we do for dollars.